Yeah, hello. Um, so I'm going to be talking about Algorave um, and algorithmic dance culture in general. So an Algorave is where we danced algorithms, um, which sounds kind of stupid, but I'm going to try and convince you that actually this has some cultural resonance, which uh, you might be able to see. Let's see. Um, so what is an Algorave? It's you have people making code. Um, you can probably just about see someone in the front there. And the screen is projected behind them. You can see the code on the screen. And there's people dancing. Um, so, the people, so the person on stage making code is writing software on stage um, that generates music or visuals, although I'm just going to be talking about music today mainly. Um, and so, yeah, let's, let's hear some. That gives you a kind of a, a taste of the flavour of an algorithm. It's quite messy, glitchy, um, not your average computer programming experience. Um, so there's Ash there, who's writing code that's generating the music. Tito's there on the mic as well. Um, and there's kind of feedback loop, a creative feedback loop. Uh, musicians on stage writing code. Um, sounds coming out of the speakers, which we experience as music. Um, and people are dancing to it, but then it folds back on itself because the musician is responding to the audience. So co coding is somehow embedded in this immediate cultural activity. Um, so we've been doing this for a while now, since around the year 2000, I got involved in algorithmic dance music. Um, and around that time, there seems to be a lot of people, something in the air about this idea of using code live in the performing arts. Um, and we found each other eventually and formed this organisation, the temporary organisation for the promotion of live algorithm programming, um, which is a backronym for TopLap. Um, and I encourage you to check this out. There's loads of other things. Uh, it's a re real vibrant community of practice. Um, but I want to clear up a couple of sort of misconceptions um, that might have been uh, put about by sub-editors. Um, one is that um, live coders are not DJs. Um, we're making live music, uh, improvised usually. Um, we're not trying to replace DJs either. DJs are really great. Um, I love DJs. Uh, <laughs> there's no problem. Um, we're, not, we're not some kind of post-human AI uh, thing that's trying to uh, replace anyone. We're just making music. Um, but we're not uh, software engineers either. Um, in engineering, I guess you have a problem and you go through some process to solve it, a design process. Um, but live coders are much more interested in causing problems than solving them, um, I think. <laughs> uh, it, there's no quality assured process. There's, um, it's all, uh, and then at the end of a live coding performance, you tend to delete all your code. So you don't even end up with anything, any product at the end, apart from the live experience. Um, and it's not really a sci-fi thing either. Um, it, it's more like stripping back technology, taking away user interfaces and revealing the language that's underneath, um, sort of treating a laptop as a language machine for describing music. Um, and when you do that, when you strip back the technology, you see all kinds of, I think, ancient connections between code, uh, pattern and movement. Um, so here's some code. Um, well, it's good to see some code, <laughs> but I'm playing a bit of a trick on you because it's actually a knitting pattern uh, for a sock. Um, <laughs> so, but you run it twice to get two socks if you want. Uh, so, um, <laughs> but, but this, this is actually code. It's, uh, um, it's got uh, if statements, it's got logical branching, uh, lots of loops, of course, being knitting. Um, it's got um, named routines, which are called from different places. Uh, so my point here is that um, people have always uh, engaged with code, and you don't need a computer to do that. Um, you just need some double-pointed needles in this case. Um, 
Because, yeah, so what, what we're doing when we're live coding is making patterns, really. We're treating code as a pattern language. Um, and we're making it for the body in the same way as when you're knitting, you're making something for the body. Uh, people are uh, almost literally stepping into the code by responding to the music that's made. Um, so I see a kind of di direct analogy between knitting and um, coding. Uh, and another thing, uh, so you might recognize this, it's a maypole, which is a nice thing to do in spring around this sort of time. Um, and so children usually go around a maypole in different directions, um, weaving in and, each, in and out of each other, um, following an algorithm actually, a step-by-step -step algorithm, a procedure. Um, and they might go around each other twice or go back on each other. And the result is this braid, which can be astonishingly complex and beautiful. Um, and it, it's, it's quite captivating to watch them do it. Um, it's a very cultural event. Uh, very symbolic, um, and uh, yeah, it's not exactly an our grave, but <laughs> just making the point that algorithmic dance culture isn't anything particularly new. Um, it's something which I think is a very human activity. Um, so back to music then. Um, I've kind of come to the conclusion that um, pattern in music, and by pattern I really mean code, um, it sort of fits into four different categories. Um, one is repetition, um, which is obviously very useful in rave music. Uh, another is symmetry, reflection, um, rotation. Um, another is interference, uh, which I really enjoy. Um, in the background, you see some weaving. Um, and the warp and weft threads are actually striped white and red. But you get this star pattern because of the interference between them through the structure of the particular structure of the weave. Um, and you see this a lot in music. Um, and also deviation, sort of playing with people's expectations, um, the sweet anticipation of music, and then the breaking of that anticipation is uh, a lot of what music is all about, which sort of um, comes around in the form of random numbers in code. Uh, so I'm going to sort of do a demonstration now using this environment tidal cycles, which I've made with some friends and um, is free open source software. You can download it and use it yourself. Um, so yeah, let's just do that. I'm going to try and talk while coding, which is never easy, but let's see what happens. Um, so I'll just try and make a quick tune. So now it's the repetition. Um, you get to know it really well uh, by the end of this session. Um, and so, so if I make it sort of interfere with itself by shifting it up seven notes and offsetting it in time by a quarter of a cycle, start to get an arpeggio. So I can start to add more structure to that. Again, a bit higher. Maybe with a different sound. can start to make it interfere more by reversing it in one of the speakers. I'll add a 
add a break as well, or see. So now play with the symmetry by shifting the whole uh, rhythm every step. Add a bit of random variation. Um, So yeah, just to talk about the experience of live coding before I conclude, which is now. Um, yeah, this word Kairos is really nice because it's all about being in the moment, um, responding in time. Um, and I think this is what um, live coding is about, sort of bringing programming, the act of uh, uh, computer programming into the moment, um, responding to events as they unfold. So it's not about uh, reciting a ready-made piece of music, but responding to the sound as it comes and, and the audience as they respond. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really special feeling actually, sort of being completely lost in this world of language, very abstract world, and yet having this very physical response coming back. Um, I think there were some people dancing in the back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, I, I encourage you to uh, yeah, get involved. Thank you. Yeah.